Hello and welcome back to my channel. Now I know that winter hasn't actually ended yet and therefore this video might be a teeny bit premature, but I wanted to look back at winter so far and see which sort of pieces from within my wardrobe I have been wearing on repeat. So number one on the list is my Uniqlo Heat Tech trousers. Now, some of you might remember these from the what's new in my wardrobe for winter video, which actually only went up last month. Uh, I actually did only buy these in sort of early January days. And since then, they have pretty much been the only sort of trousers, smart tailored trousers that I've worn outside the house. When I'm inside the house, I pretty much tend to be wearing joggers or like a cashmere knitted bottom of some kind. So basically loungewear. But when I go out, that's when I wear what I call proper clothes. And yeah, basically I have been reaching for these time and time again. And I just find them really easy to style. I mean, obviously for me, those of you who are familiar with my style and how I sort of put my outfits together, one of my golden rules is at least one piece of tailoring. So these have essentially been my one piece of tailoring in any outfit that I've been wearing outside the house. And a go-to outfit, which I have been wearing this side of Christmas almost every day whenever we've gone out, is these trousers, a pair of trainers, a chunky knit on the top, a coat, and then a beanie hat, and then whatever bag I wanna use for the day. Um, so these have definitely been my most worn bottoms for winter so far. Next up is jewelry. Now, I know that jewelry isn't necessarily limited to or specific to winter, but I do find that I sort of develop seasonal favorites as the seasons go on. Now, as many of you will already know, I am a gold hoop gal. They are definitely my earring of choice. They're what I wear on the daily. And the vast majority of my gold hoops, because I do have somewhat of a collection, girls gotta have choice, vast majority of my gold hoops come from Majuri. Now Majuri have what well, I like to sort of split them up into two collections. So they've got a gold vermeil collection and there's also silver in amongst this as well. And then they've got the solid gold collection. Now I, being a lazy earring jewellery person in general, in the case that I rarely take off my jewellery when I go to bed, unless it's like a big chunky ring like that, in which case I will. But if it comes to earrings, necklaces, bracelets, I tend to leave them on. And that includes when I'm going in the shower, if I were going for a swim or sunbathing in summer, any of those kind of things. So the 14 karat solid gold collection from Majuri is what I tend to sort of go for the most because it is the most practical and therefore it's kind of suits me better. I don't have to take it off when I go to bed at night and that's also another reason why I like hoops because I find them comfortable to sleep in and I don't have to take them off when I go in the shower so I can just leave everything on, shower etc as usual and I know that my jewellery will be in tip-top condition. Now if you are a hoop lover like me, Majuri actually have a range of hoop charms. Now I think they've had some for a little while now but they have just recently added a few more designs to their hoop hoop charm collection, if you will. So they've got loads of different designs now. So what I appreciate about the idea of these hoop charms is that my daily earrings don't have to be switched out for a completely different pair. Let's say if I needed something a little bit dressier. So these are my daily gold hoops. And here I've got some of the pearl hoop charms and I've also got some of the mini diamond hoop charms. So both of these can change the look of these simple hoops. So they're easy, you can just slide them on, slide them off, they're so easy to use, and it's a good way to change up the look of those really basic hoops that you might already own. You can also add these hoop charms to so many of Majuri's different kind of hoop styles, from the little huggies to the slightly larger hoops. So there's lots of different options to mix and match to create your own look. Now, another thing I really appreciate about Majuri, and I think this is actually sort of their main ethos as a company, is that they're bringing us fine jewellery without that hefty inflated markup that we are so used to seeing from a plethora of other brands within the fine jewellery market. 
Now, if you did want to treat yourself to some Majuri diamonds, you'll be pleased to know they are responsibly sourced from suppliers who follow conflict-free and socially responsible practices. And 80% of their gold comes from recycled sources, which is made from post-consumer waste. Right now, when I look back at my wardrobe from my 20s, it was a completely different picture to what it is now. I 100% favoured quantity over quality. And now obviously I've had quite a flip. When I hit 30, that was a real changing point for me. But in my 20s, my jewellery collection looked very different to what it does now. Obviously my style has taken a more minimal turn, so there were a lot more statement necklaces, but it was full of cheap and cheerful and sort of trend-led pieces, cheap and cheerful costume jewellery, and it could have been three pounds here, four pounds there, a five pound statement necklace, and all these little things add up. And it's funny because if I actually did the maths, I'd probably find that now I've cut down on the quantity in favour of quality, I'm probably spending, I could even be spending less, but I would say, let's say if I'm spending the same amount, but just on higher quality pieces that I know will stand the test of time and they won't tarnish after two weeks or break or shed feathers everywhere. So yes, that is why I sort of favour the Majuri 14 karat gold collection because I know that it's durable and it will stand the test of time and be in my collection for many, many years. Right, moving on to item number three and I've cheekily sort of grouped this together as more of a category. Although technically this is the same jumper just in three different colorways and it is my Kos cashmere. Now I have have quite the extensive knitwear collection from many brands, some high street, some higher end. But by far, my favourite knitwear to date is my Kos cashmere. Now I'm not going to go too much into detail because I made a high street cashmere comparison video the tail end of last year, I'll link it down below in the description box for anyone that wants to sort of go back and watch that. And that is where I really sort of did a deep dive and I went into an Emma analysis, if you will, of a few different brands of high street cashmere. And Kos by far came out, spoiler alert, as my top one. And that is why I am constantly reaching in particular for the high funnel neck jumper, which is from their collection. And as I was mentioning earlier, when I was talking about the Uniqlo Heat Tech trousers, my go-to outfit is those trousers, a chunky jumper, which more often than not has been one of these three, but on rotation, and then a pair of trainers, coat, beanie, hat, good to go. So yes, my cost cashmere is going absolutely nowhere no time soon. Does that make sense? I don't know. Now, I think the prime reason that I love this cashmere so much is because it's thick. Now, as I did mention at the start of the video, we haven't had a particularly cold winter thus far. We might have a bit of a beast from the east situation coming up very soon, although I hope it blows past us. Um, but these are so thick. Normally, I would wear one of my um, Uniqlo Heat Tech thermals, the long sleeve ones, which I've shown you guys before, underneath any knitwear. It's actually been mild enough, and these are thick enough, and so sort of sumptuous and cosy, that I haven't needed to wear a thermal underneath these. I did one day and I was just dripping. So what I wear now is just a loose fitting t-shirt underneath, which gives me a bit of breathability, gives me a little sort of layer between skin and beautiful cashmere, therefore reducing the need to wash said cashmere, which is another tip of mine. Um, yes, it's, ooh, it's my favorite. Right, next up are my shearling or furry lined, in fact, I think these might be called Sherpa, Sherpa Converse. Um, I bought these last winter and I wore them so much, I just knew heading into this season that these were probably gonna be one of my most worn footwear options. And again, as I've said, my go-to outfit always usually involves trainers. I just favor comfort over anything else. And I think it is possible to get that hybrid of comfort and style. Obviously it comes down to personal taste, but these for me were such a good buy and I haven't regretted it at all. So 
They are your standard sort of high top converse. I think these are actually a Chuck 70, but these are in leather. So that immediately adds to the warmth over the standard sort of canvas that they're usually made out of. And like some of the other ones that I've got in my footwear collection. And then they're lined in a really nice, it's actually not real fur. It's not sheepskin like you would get in an Ugg boot or anything like that, but it is a nice synthetic furry lining, which keeps my feet incredibly toasty and I wear my Uniqlo heat tech socks inside these and they are plenty warm. I don't find myself needing something more substantial. These for me have been absolutely brilliant over the past few months. Right, moving on to number five on the list and it is Arquette beanie hats. So again, I've kind of grouped these together because they are the same hat just in, in here I've got three different colours, but I actually think I have this specific hat in maybe five or six different colours, um, which I'm, I'm actually not ashamed of that. I'm not ashamed to say that I am a repeat purchaser. If I find something, exhibit A, exhibit B, exhibit C, um, if I find something that works really well for me and I find I'm wearing it on repeat, on repeat, repeat, I will buy it in any other colours that I think are going to bring value to my wardrobe or that are going to sort of integrate well, not necessarily bring value, but integrate well with the rest of my wardrobe, just so that I have, you know, some more options and then that gives me more outfit choices if I switch up the colours. So these are a mix of merino wool and alpaca, so they have they have a bit of a fuzziness to them and yeah sometimes they do shed a, a bit of fluff here and there but I wouldn't have said it's anything to write home about. But what I like about these in particular is that because they've got the two folds so I've just put this on one fold and you can obviously adjust that because you can completely unfold them all together and you've got something really slouchy but I would either fold mine up once and then pop it on and then have that little bit you know, that little bit there, excess, if you like, dangling at the back, or whatever floats your boat, you can double fold, and then you can have it a bit sort of more traditional beanie tighter fitting at the top of your head, but with a bit more like substance. One thing that I really hate when it comes to beanie hats is those super, super thin, I, they remind me of like the sort of hats that you get in um, like football merchandise stores. You know, they're those really sort of thin beanies that have got one fold and they like stick to your head like a condom. Sorry, I'm whispering that in case you've got children. <laughs> it's not like it's a swear word or anything, but they stick to your head and they're so tight. And that just, that vibe is just, it reminds me of school of like so many ill-fitting, horrible things. And I just, I'm not about that. So I prefer a beanie that just is a bit thicker, that has a thicker fabric and that has that sort of double fold to it if I want to wear it like that. And the fact that you can either wear it with one or with none or with the double fold is an added bonus. Right, next up, I think, what are we on, number six maybe? Um, so as you might have noticed, I've tried to kind of pick sort of one item from each sort of category. So I've got these for bottoms, this for tops, you know, hat. So I've got one piece from each, if you were to make an outfit, if that makes sense. So this would be my most worn bag of the last couple of months. Yes, this bag has just been my number one bag for sort of going out on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think it's just down to practicality. Now we've kind of had this discussion before of, this bag might not be the most practical for those of you with a slightly larger bust. I have a very modest, small bust. So this for me is so incredibly practical. And anything that renders me hands-free, I am so here for. Whether that be because I just want to do things with my hand, happy hands, whether it be that I just, I'm shopping, we're like out food shopping or, Maybe we're walking the dogs, or I don't know, anything. I just, I like to have access to my hands. So if I've got a bag that I constantly need to be like holding on my shoulder or holding in my hand, it's not always a winning combination for me. Now, what I love about this is obviously the ability that it's able to crossbody 
but unlike a lot of crossbodies that can be much smaller, in here I don't have to compromise so I can still fit in my two tote bags in there, my sunglasses case for if I wanna take my sunglasses off, my phone charger, there's absolutely no compromising because this bag is full of space. And I think that is one of the main reasons why it's been my go-to. Right, now I was just referencing sunglasses and it might be a bit strange. Okay, let me reword that. If you don't know me, <laughs> certainly if you don't follow me on Instagram, it might be a bit strange to see that I'm bringing up sunglasses in a winter sort of favorites video. For those of you that do know me, <laughs> you will know that I wear sunglasses on a daily basis, come rain or shine. Sunglasses are kind of, I don't know, they're my confidence booster, I suppose, and also they are, as I'm getting older, I'm becoming more conscious of the effects that light and the sun and rays are doing to my skin, so I do like to keep the areas around my eyes protected as much as possible when outside. So these are Celine Baby Audrey sunglasses. Regardless of it being winter, summer, spring, autumn, these are just in general my favorite pair of sunglasses. I think they are, they're very popular. I mean, they're a sellout style for Celine and they're, it's the reason why they were brought back after Phoebe left, you know, they were brought back and just continued. They're a, a reoccurring style. And they are, despite the fact that they're quite a chunky frame, I find them quite lightweight. I find them very comfortable. Another thing that's important to me that you guys know by now is the, the branding, it's quite minimal branding. It's just got Celine written on one arm and that's it. It's very, very subtle. So I just think that the design's very classic. And in terms of style, they are a slightly oversized frame, but they're not like those crazy oversized sunglasses that we used to wear back in the early noughties. I include myself in that group of people because I did. I had ginormous sunglasses. I swear I used to take up my entire face. Like how I'm getting wrinkles around my eyes when I used to wear those, I do not know, but <laughs> I, I did, I wore them. Um, but these, I feel like they're not quite veering into that sort of movie star, massive oversized territory but they're just, they're just the right size, you know? They are, mm, perfection. Right, moving on to coats. So I've, I've got two in my category of coats, one light, one dark, for balance. Um, the first of which is the Philippa K Alexa coat, which I think I also featured in the What's New in My Wardrobe for Winter video last month. I don't know if maybe that's because this is new that I've been reaching for it more, but one thing I appreciate this and that I spoke about in that video is the length. So again, I'm not gonna go into too much detail because I've already spoken about it in that video. So if you want more detail and you want more cutaways and things, you can go and check it out in that video. But yeah, I just have found that this has been a really good coat and one that I've reached for a lot. And then black, because of course, you know, I love a bit of black. My favorite black coat so far, I actually thought would have been the, um, longer belted Melenberger one that I was, um, when did I buy that? I think I bought that tail end of last year. I've actually been reaching for this one, which is my London coat from the Curated. And this tends to be the one, and I think it's because it's got a dropped sleeve. Therefore, when I'm wearing thicker knitwear, it can allow for like a more of a bat wing. So it's more comfortable. So yeah, that has been my other sort of go-to coat that I've been reaching for for sort of daily outfits and whenever we head out and about. Right, that is it from me today. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you in the next video.